Hi everyone, it's me, Flipper's Paragraph, back with another review, this time of the 2006 Japanese animated film Paprika. I'm super excited about this review, super happy to be reviewing this, and super happy to be sharing this time with you guys. So, Paprika is, like I mentioned, a 2006 Japanese animated film animated by the company Madhouse, which some of you might know if you're a fan of anime. They animated a lot of very prominent uh, anime television shows such as Hunter x Hunter, Death Note, One Punch Man. They animated all of those shows. So they're very prominent in the Japanese anime industry, very famous company. And they made this movie with the help of director Satoshi Kon. Satoshi Kon, I had never actually watched a film of his. He has many very, very famous movies. Two that, of his that I've been meaning to watch is uh, Perfect Blue and Millennium Actress, along with, of course, Tokyo Godfather. Tokyo Godfazuzu, I think is how it is in Japanese. It's just, he's so well known in the Japanese uh, animation scene for being this art house, weird, absurd, uh, dreamlike a director who makes these very, uh, I guess, stylistic films. That's what I'll call them. They're very stylistic. And I'm really happy to be finally having seen one of these and to be reviewing them with you guys. So let me just get right into it with Paprika. So the plot of this film is essentially about this machine that allows people to therapeutically read other people's dreams. And this one uh, therapist named Paprika uh, goes into people's dreams and helps them out. And the story is essentially about this machine being stolen and used for nefarious purposes that eventually culminates in reality melting into the dreamscape and Paprika having to save essentially the entire world. That's the story. And it's relatively complex for what it's trying to go for. And that is, I think, what makes it so interesting. So let's get right into it. I fucking love this movie, okay? This movie is so good. Aside from it being like nerdy shit, and all of that it's just it's so well animated it's so well done the premise and the concept are so well executed it's consistent it's such a well-made film it's such a brilliant film it's such a fun film it's such an enjoyable experience to watch this film everything about it is so so good and i'll get into it with more details thanks to the handy notebook but this movie really does blow blow me out of the water because it it's just so fantastic to see a movie with so much passion and so many ideas behind it that it's just it's a wonderful experience honestly it really is the movie has a very strong opening it opens on this sort of circus that has all these clowns and elephants and all this big, gigantic, very well animated sequence of this dream that melts into other movies and things like that. This movie has a lot of love for movies and it references a lot of movies right away. It references Tarzan right off the bat. It references uh, The Roman Holiday. And with this love of film comes this sort of passion that is invoked in the entire film that is really remarkable to see and it's really intoxicating honestly because it's very 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 uh lovable this film and the opening sequence is just so powerful and it's so direct and in your face and the opening credit sequence is this whole trippy montage of paprika moving in and out between reality and dreams apparently and her like melting like the way that you see the world and all this stuff like there's all these absurd angles like there's this one where the guy has this guy's walking down the street and he has a picture on his shirt and then the camera goes from being on, on the street into the guy's shirt and then it quickly goes back out like that and paprika is in the shirt if that makes sense if you have seen the movie you know what i'm talking about but it's a difficult sequence to explain but it is very, very well executed. It's very well done. 
the animation is so stylistic, it's so gorgeous, and it quickly establishes this sort of dream logic, and it quickly establishes the rules of the universe, and it sticks to those rules, which is something that a movie like Inception, for example, this movie is a lot like Inception. A movie like Inception doesn't follow its own rules very much, but this movie has its rules, sticks to it, and does creative things within the bounds of that rule. Because usually why people break the rules is because they want to try something extra creative. And it doesn't fit within the rules. But the rules are there to guide creativity in this case. And it allows for more creative ideas to sprout from Paprika's plot. The dialogue is so rapid fire. And it's this homage filled collage of just these beautiful little rifts between characters these characters have double entendres they say like little jokes and quips at each other and it's so stylistic and so much fun when i talk about stylistic dialogue this is what i mean you can hear their voice and you can hear how much they love this movie and you can hear their own influences and their own homage you can hear their childhood in this movie you can hear what they grew up with you can hear what they love what they hate you can hear it through the dialogue and it's so invigorating and it's so interesting to watch. It's it's beautiful, honestly. It's truly, truly beautiful. The voice acting is present and full. It's energetic. It's bombastic. It hits you like a sledgehammer. It's so passionate and exciting and just it makes the movie so, so much better, especially from Tokita and Paprika. They are just there, and their voice acting is just on point every single line. There isn't a single bad instance of delivery. There isn't a single moment where I don't believe their character. And their character, by the way, are, their characters are so interesting. Like, Paprika is such an interesting character. The police chief, the uh, chairman, they're all such interesting characters. And... It's difficult not to sympathize with all of them, or at least the ones that you're supposed to sympathize with. And it's difficult not to hate the ones that you're supposed to hate because they're just so well written and they're so, like I mentioned, they're present and they're full and they're here and they're just ready to fight. Like in every instance of the movie, they're just ready to fucking brawl. And it's so interesting to watch these characters that are so invested and these voice actors that are so dedicated, it's just it's just a masterwork of voice of voice acting. It might even be better voice acting than The Girl Without Hands. It The Girl Without Hands is a masterpiece and it's really, really good at voice acting. But there are some instances that I can recall in this movie where the voice acting exceeded my expectations and exceeded that of The Girl Without Hands. Even though I mentioned in my Girl Without Hands review that that voice acting was, in many ways, the best I'd ever heard. This one also combats some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in my life. And it's so gorgeously animated, too. Every single frame is just this magnificent painting, this magnificent artwork, and it's just a master to see this sweeping, beautiful, dreamlike uh strokes of brushes and these colors these colors that just pop out at you and just attack your eyes in the best way it's like it's like being electrocuted watching this movie because there's just so much invigoration and so much like energy being charged through you when you watch some of these colors and images attacking you on screen it's a beautiful thing, honestly. Another exciting aspect of this movie, aside from the animation, that fits so well with the animation is the soundtrack. The soundtrack is this exciting yet simplistic electronic music. And I've, and I've bitched about this to the ends of the earth, but I think that orchestral music scores are limiting. I think that more mu movies should adopt rock scores, rap scores, electronic scores, folk scores. I think that they should try to branch out into other genres besides just orchestral music because orchestral music is very limiting. Sure, it sounds classic and exciting, but there are many other ways to get that classic, exciting sound. And while this movie doesn't sound classic in the, in the musical terms, 
it does sound so exciting. It's got this like funky beats behind every scene. It reminded me of the soundtrack to Drive in some instances. It was so exciting and so much fun to watch and so much fun to listen to. And this is a movie where it's like blink and you'll miss something cool because something interesting is always happening. The pace in this movie is excellent. There's always something happening. There's always something new going on. There's always something interesting going on. And you just watch like these unique character designs in these unique locations that are only on screen for like two minutes or something like that because the locations are always changing. The character designs also change all the time, especially Paprika. She changes into like a butterfly, into a mermaid, into like different animation styles. It's it, it, blink and you'll miss something cool. Like seriously, you have to watch this movie with 100% focus. That's part of why I do The Notebook. It forces me to focus. And it, it, it really allows you to get the most out of the movie if you're just there 100%. So if you're going to watch this movie, please focus on it. Because you can't like put this on in the background while you're reading the paper or whatever. Because that's what kids do nowadays. They read the paper. There are these interesting discussions into the philosophy of dreams that go well into the dialogue. It's just these, these discussions about movies and about dreams is like the two main themes of this movie. And it's just, it's so interesting, especially from, from a movie lover, from a person who thinks dreams are interesting, from an avid dreamer. Like these discussions about the philosophy of dreams and the philosophy of movies. And they talk about like certain movie making aspects. Like they talk about the 180 degree rule and pan scoping and all these stuff. And all this, these things that, like, only, like, a true filmmaker would... Not, obviously, like, not a... Not, like, something like the 180-degree rule. But, like, things that, like... It, it would take you having a little bit of film knowledge to fully appreciate some of the things that they're talking about in this movie. You don't need to have, like, an encyclopedic amount of knowledge or whatever. But you do need to have at least, like, the bare minimum of filmmaking knowledge to sort of be like, Oh, I know what they're talking about. That's pretty cool. And it is pretty cool, honestly. This movie is... It's so fucking good. Like, <laughs> it's difficult for me to break it down analytically and just discuss every single aspect of it. But, but it just... It just imbues this sense of of energy. And it's the, it's the most energetic movie that I've seen in a while. And it's just so exciting. And it's so much fun. And it's so enticing and invigorating and it's it's just a masterwork to see it honestly is it's really really impressive i highly highly recommend there are some bad things about it though and i'll get into two big ones which is that with like the talk of movies and with the talk of dreams sometimes it gets a little full of itself and sometimes it gets a little cheesy like i don't know if you've ever seen the movie the lady in the water but there's a line in the movie The Lady in the Water where a main character says The Lady in the Water is a horror movie and a horror fantasy drama. And in it, a main character says this is like something out of a horror movie when a dog is about to attack him. And that line is terrible. And there's a line just like that in this movie where they go like this is like something out of a mystery novel. It's... It's the exact same thing. It's a little bit better than the horror movie line, but it's not much better. It's It made me physically just kind of tense up because it was just not good. And there's also this one plot point where they're trying to find the man who stole the uh, the mini, which is the name of the of the device that allows you to read people's dreams. And Tokita is wearing a shirt that is in reference to an amusement park that he and the man who stole the mini frequented. So they go to that amusement park. And it's like Paprika sees the shirt and she goes, hmm. And then they go to the amusement park. And that's like kind of a lazy, kind of lame plot point. But it's over quickly. Like I said, this movie moves very, very quickly. So every bad thing in it is just gone in like 20 seconds. It's not like something that lingers and stays and you have to live with it for the next like 20 minutes. It's just a bad plot point. It's just some bad lines. That's the worst that it gets, honestly. And there are other elements of it that are just executed so wonderfully. Like the tone 
is just perfect throughout. It never gets too horrifying. It never gets too childish. It always straddles that line. The movie is rated R, but it always straddles that line so finely of like it knows exactly what it wants to be and pursuing that relentlessly. And it has this wonderful sense of like thriller elements, this wonderful sense of like almost like a spy movie that is just so much fun to watch. This movie is remarkably fun. This movie, it's like... It, 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 this this movie reminds me of what people say whenever they're like, why don't you turn your brain off when you watch a movie? Isn't that the point? And I argue, no, you can watch a movie that is fun without turning your brain off. And this is a prime example of a movie like that. This movie has some horror elements. It has some thriller elements. But most of all, it's just a very, very exciting adventure that these characters go on. These very lovable, very relatable characters these characters, by the way, Tokita is a man who is remarkably fat, like comically fat, and they rarely ever make fun of it. They make fun of it, I think, two or three times, but it's like when they're in a tense argument with Tokita, or they're saying it out of genuine care for him like he's eating like a fucking bucket of food and they're like are you sure you need to do that like this movie is so compassionate as well it has such a sense of human energy and human nature behind it that it's just it's a beautiful thing to watch it's a beautiful thing to watch there's also this very sweet very tasteful very delicate and loving romance that happens in the movie and between Tokita and Paprika and it's it's done very very well it's done so so lovingly and so tenderly it's done in such a respectful and such a in such a timeless manner like this movie the romance aspect of it feels very timeless because it's just so human and so compassionate this movie feels so very human in the romance setting and in the thriller setting, it feels so just energetic and bombastic. It feels so animated and so vibrant that it's difficult not to like this movie if you're really, really watching it. If you have it on, if you have it on in the background, I understand how you might not like it. But if you're really watching this movie, there's just so much to like about it. I mean. The other, like, negative thing is only that the editing is a little weak at some points. Not even at that many points. Just, like, a few that I can recall. It's mostly really, really good. But there's, like, I can recall, like, two or three points where it gets a little weak. But besides that, there's just so much... So much to love about this movie. And another great thing is the ending. It ends in such a... Such a... A conclusive way like everything is wrapped up nicely everything and the things that aren't wrapped up nicely have a reason to not be wrapped up nicely um but everything is just concluded in this very s swooping way where everything is taken out in one fell swing and it ends with uh the police officer who hates movies finally going to the movie theater and it's like just a little tiny win a little tiny victory for this character that has been like a, a fucking her abused the entire movie basically um who lost like his love and everything who just lost his best friend and he's just been taking hit after hit this entire movie and finally he f just works up the courage to go to the movie theater and it's just it's wonderful it's an amazing ending and that is essentially my entire review so paprika an energetic, vibrant, exciting, animated collage of dreams and realities and movies. It's fun. It's vibrant. It's exciting. It is so, so, so much fun. And if you love movies, you'll love this movie. If you love animated movies, you'll love this movie. If you love Japanese movies, you'll love this movie. I think if you like anime, you'll like this movie. I don't watch too much anime, so I have no reference for that. But of the anime that I have seen, this is very similar. Um, I 
I'm going to give this movie a 96%, which rates it the highest movie I've ever rated on this channel as of today. So thank you all so much for watching. This has been so much fun. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Tell me what I should review next. And that's going to be it for me, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.